bought a Komodo um, Big Joe barbecue, and um, it basically smokes and it does. I mean, it does everything: pizzas, you know, roasted cats, whatever. But when you're doing long, slow cooking, you need hours and hours of time, and to stoke that um, charcoal. Um, is really painful at night, and so I found uh, this controller that Mark uh, created, uh, which basically regulates the airflow and does a whole bunch of other things. And so I thought, just as a complete, you know, like bit of a X factor to this um, before morning tea, we'd have Mark just chat to us a little bit about um, the work that he's gone into uh, with this. Um, with this product, but then also on a bigger sense data. And I think if you put in your mind the sense of when you're talking to students about where this can lead you and what careers are available and, and what people are doing, I think Mark will really uh, hopefully um, encapsulate that and, and present something completely different to what you normally might uh, be chatting to students about <coughs> pathways that you get into. So. Uh, um, I forgot to bring the smart fire, and uh, but I, I've got some pictures of my Komodo, so I'm going to throw them up um, uh, after the press. There it is. There, there it is. So it's beautiful. All right, Mark. I'll, I'll let you introduce yourself, and um, and then we'll we'll take a couple of questions, and we'll go from there. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Mark Terrell. Um, is there kind of an interesting session that you're running in that you're looking at different topics about how data can be relevant for uh, students learning IT, um, you know, being 2017 and all, and it's quite interesting. I heard from a bill that a lot of the course in the back um, in the past has been access databases, and I remember doing that back in school. And it's kind of interesting looking forward now to how we treat data and how we store it and how we process it and how people come to end up using it. So. My story is about barbecues, so you know, like all kind of uh, hopefully good inventions, it's born out of necessity. Um, you don't want to be up all night, uh, you want to be able to actually go down to the shops and know what your barbecue is doing at home. So you need to have the internet connected. I think that's a key point um, with uh, systems these days. So I'm just having my well, computer flash up things on my screen. Um, it's a key thing about computer systems these days that it's all cloud connected. Uh, you can access it from anywhere, um, you can share it with people, you can do access control. And so it's, it's, it's quite a different world to what we used to deal with with relation, uh, relational databases. So hopefully today I can give you a little bit of a snapshot of what the product is, um, how the product works, and potentially some ideas on how your students make it real for themselves. Um, how they can potentially look at their home lives and hopefully come up with some use cases of their own um, to help make them. So with the Smartfire, this is the actual Smartfire, pretty small little device. Uh, inside of it, it runs a, a little hardware board like this, effectively Arduino based, using a system called Particle Photon if you want to look at that up later. Easy way of, you know, $20 US gets you that small part, which looks like this in a little module. And it's an internet, internet connected device. Uh, this has really kind of changed things for a lot of people at this, this particular particle photon about two years ago when it got released. Being able to have a Wi Fi based uh, device with such powerful computing um, in it that you're actually quite amazed as to what's available. It takes you five minutes to hook up, but once you have this hooked up and you might have connected it to a light sensor or you might have a temperature probe for your barbecue, um, you really need a place to store that data. Um, I understand Google's had a fair bit to do with your conference, which is really great from my perspective because I use a lot of Google services. Um, there is a Google database service called Firebase. They actually purchased this, I think, about three years ago and I've been using it for about four and a half years. Um, online database, unstructured data, uh, JSON queries, um, full security and so forth, but it makes it really easy to do real-time updates. The really interesting thing that Firebase introduced to uh, sort of mass populace was you can update a piece of data over here, into that database over here, and you might have another database. 
or another device connected to over here. And they would update in real time. And it was actually, you know, it was nearly magical, you know, 20 years of IT, and I was I'm looking at this going, this is just amazing. I think the Google guys thought the same thing, so they offered them a lot of money a year later and brought them into the fold. And if you have an Android phone and you're using messaging, Firebase is actually how they're transferring those messages for instant messaging on your Android these days. Um, so it's quite a powerful technology, and when you look at that data, because I think I have something like 15 million records a month, um, sometimes up to 30 million, but on average about 15 million records a month. And those records are temperature records, quite simply. What are my various probes doing? Uh, what is the unit doing? It has a little fan inside that regulates the airflow into the barbecue and thereby controls the temperature of this charcoal barbecue. And so I'm um, yeah, very keen on watching what the fan is doing because the controller takes you know, decisions based on the PID algorithm to and other you know, sort of logic rules to decide what to do with that fan. So being able to track all this information, being able to know when the user opened the lid for their barbecue because that changes the atmosphere and the environment and you want to turn off the fan when that happens. Uh, you want to provide alerts to the user and you know, your steak's ready. Uh, I mean, get your steak from your barbecue, it's all ready to go. Um, and or, you know, your fuel's run out on your barbecue, you better go along and have a look at the fire. Um, so all these kind of alerts and events, by the little particle photon, um, up to the Firebase database, and it's stored in the database. Now the cool thing about um, Firebase in particular is they've introduced this concept of cloud functions, which is basically a JavaScript function that sits there and watching events hit the database. As soon as the event hits there, you can look for deletes, writes, um, modifications. As soon as the event um, hits there, you can run conditional logic on it, all in uh, Node.js format. And this makes it really easy for you to go, okay, um, I want to process the data. I might want to send my alert via SMS that way, um, which is all built into the Google infrastructure, incidentally. Um, or I might want to take an action another API. So it's really easy for um, people to get going quickly and instrument a whole environment that you know, five years ago would have required us to set up servers, set up a relational database or you know, unstructured, sit there writing our own uh, API interface, set up the web server to handle that, hopefully some redundancy, some you know, heartbeats in there, maybe a load balancer or two, add in a firewall, um, add in a key management server, all those kind of things. You, know, you, you I would have had a team sitting there for at least four days spinning all that up and making sure it was working well. New environment, if I can get going in minutes, and it's actually pretty powerful having that um, whole platform as a, down to you know, actual mobile backend as a service, you actually just don't have to touch anything, you just need to add data. So from my perspective as a Sort of a bit of a creator, um, it's a lot easier to get going. And so, really interested in how these kids um, take this information, um, and I should say young adults really, um, these young adults take this information because this field of whole data science is not a surprise to us that it's growing, but the way that it's growing is a little bit unexpected in some ways because. If you create this cool application, do I say at Smartfire, um, you don't quite realise the time or the data you end up with and how much opportunity you have from it. So the people who become the creators and do really well in the future are the people who understand data <coughs> potentially start off designing their application and or device with data being the goal, not just a byproduct. For me, it's been a byproduct. So I'm doing a second generation of my satellite fire now. I'm adding extra sensors in there. I'm adding a temperature sensor within the actual box. Um, I'm adding a humidity sensor to the actual box. Um, I'm adding extra status slides to indicate different status events to the user and letting them know, hey, this is interesting to you. Um, that we alert and detect um, events such as we're now running a running average over any data that comes in. 
um, they will be releasing a feature where you can go, okay, um, hi Neil, we can tell over the last two hours that your fan has gone up, um, which indicates to us that your fuel is running low. It's not reached critical levels yet because your pit temperature hasn't dropped, but we can tell that your fuel is running out. And just doing a simple data analysis on that over a set, say, the last two hours of data, and we track every 15 seconds. So um, we could just you go every minute over the last two hours and just track what's the moving average doing. Um, are we steadily going up or the temperature's slowly going down? Um, we can track different events. So these um, young adults to be thinking about if they are doing a data project, what's actually useful to people? What's um, you're not necessarily avoid the, um, the obvious thing of, yes, okay, the light was turned off in the room 20 times yesterday, but what does that tell us about, about the data? So um, does that mean that someone, I don't know, do you have an automatic light in the house? Do you have uh, pets tripping the lights? Um, are you doing something, was someone in the house and they're upset because they're walking between the rooms all the time? Or um, you know, is, is someone in the house that's not meant to be in the house at that time? Um, I think there's a lot of, um, there's a very poor examples just there, but I think if you challenge them to go, okay, well, what does this enable with your product um, and what insights can it give? I think that's really where the money is. Um, and so for them as potential future data scientists or IT engineers, uh, business analysts, project managers, um, constraint to anyone doing an IT degree in the next few years. I think it's anyone in business who can actually understand, okay, I have this beautiful data set, or I want to create a beautiful data set, what's actually useful to people, and what's interesting to potential companies. For me, I would like to uh, ultimately provide information off to uh, potentially Companies such as Coles for shopper dockets and then they can market to people go, we know what you cook during the week, would you like our specials on this related uh, food products? So there's a lot of, a lot of interesting ways you can actually take it. And so just um, leave it there. Aaron, um, any questions? No, that, that's great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Sure. So um, Iconic Framework is a, um, if you just search for Iconic Framework on Google, I'm sure I've ever seen the link. So mobile backhand framework. Um, that's actually interesting enough, um, largely underpinned by Angular, which is another uh, Google product um, in terms of support and how they drive the actual framework forward. So extremely well supported um, community. I think they've they're up to about 1.6 million applications that they know of. Um, and it's just it's a really easy way of getting going. You can install the tools, especially if you've got some Macs, um, you know, I'm a Mac person, but you can install the tools onto your Mac and get going with a demo application popping up on your screen in your browser as a mobile call, um, application within some like two minutes. Um, and it's all JavaScript based and on the back end, easily integrated with things like Firebase that I mentioned before. You can do easily do social authentication with um, Facebook, Twitter, Google. Um, so location that's got a live database that's connected via their Facebook account could take these kids like a day. Um, so I really do recommend that as something you have a quick look into because you know, if I'm looking at all the programming jobs and I have a lot of um, colleagues and friends and I used to run tech strategy for Telstra and their global products division, mobile is pretty much, if we aren't doing an application in mobile first, this is not getting done. Um, and that's even down to cooperation software. So this kind of framework is very useful for folk, uh, easy to get going, and I highly recommend you have a look into it. Um, you, know, you might have a use case if you're with the PuckJS, so have a good look at it. <coughs> Thanks, Mark. Really appreciate it. Can we give Mark the round of applause?